Team USA fencing doctor, Jeremy Summers. Jeremy, during a, a big event like this, Summer Nationals, and in, in general when we're, you're working with the team, what are some primarily fencing inju injuries that, that you're seeing? Oh, wow. Big question. Um, it's kind of case dependent, depending on the weapon, age group. Uh, but usually what we see is uh, lower extremity injuries, meaning anything from the low back, hips, knee, ankle. Um, that's what we're seeing because uh, fencing is a very ballistic stop-start, uh, change direction uh, sport. And so what we see a lot of times are those types of injuries in those locations. I'd say our number one injury in fencing, without a doubt, no, no, no doubt whatsoever, is the hamstring adductor injury on the fencing lunging leg. So if it's right-hander, it's right leg, left-hander, left leg. Uh, we see that every day. I just gave some advice to a fencer, a saber fencer, um, about hamstring injuries and if it's going to feel good the next day or those types of questions. Anytime you have a soft tissue injury, especially muscle, yeah, those muscles are made up of cells and those cells take time to heal. And so there's a time frame. Uh, muscle injuries don't get better overnight. And there's really no magic cure for a muscle injury. That's the common thing that people usually get frustrated with us is we don't have an answer for them other than they have to let it rest. Um, so what well, we do try to give them some, uh, some education about changing their fencing. And that's usually like with saber fencing, winning time in the first zone is probably not a really good idea because you're gonna ask that hamstring to really hold on and asking it to tear a little bit more. Uh, so we say, you know, try to go simultaneous. Uh, go slow on your attack. Uh, go backwards, throw out a line. Change the tempo. Um, when you're injured, you have to change your game. And um, a lot of athletes don't understand that. A lot of coaches don't get it. Uh, but that's the one thing I, if I were to send out a message to fencers and coaches to say, you get, if, you're, if you're an athlete or if you're a fencer and you have a hamstring injury or a quadriceps injury, which is what the kid actually had, a hip flexor injury, um, you have to change it. Don't go into a deep lunge. That's going to make it really hurt. Um, so that's kind of how we try to educate them a little bit. Um, and we try to tell them, you know, it takes about 21 days for that to get at baseline recovery for, that, for those cells to stick together. Stretching is a bad idea. People think, oh, I pulled something. I need to stretch it out because it hurts. You're making it worse. Uh, you don't want to stretch a, a strain because uh, it needs to heal. Icing, a, icing an actual muscle injury is probably not a great idea either if they're trying to get through the competition because it's going to tighten it up, make it really tight and cold. Uh, staying warm and loose is probably the best thing. Uh, you don't want to stretch it too much, but you want to stay warm. That would probably be a better recommendation than icing it down. Now, if you're in pain, ice is great. If you want to cool down for the rest of the day and really treat that injury, we give them, give them ice at the end of the day for like a muscle injury. Dr. Summers, something you said was the lacking awareness or knowledge from both athletes and their coaches. Um, but also, that sometimes carries over to trainers themselves about the sport-specific yeah in practice solutions an athlete can, can implement. You, right there, just shared some very specific recommendations for an athlete with this individual, uh, you know, kind of lower extremity muscle injury. Where does that come from? And, and what allows you to really tailor your medical knowledge to a fencing specific application? Well, uh, knowledge within the sport. I've been lucky. I've been around the sport for 25 plus years uh, on the national team back in the past. And so I know how to change my fencing when I have an injury. So that kind of directly correlates. Educating our current medical staff, um, they're catching on really quick and um, they're all bright individuals. So letting them know, like once they start seeing a lot more of fencing and those types of things, they, they can also give that advice. It's just like with any other sport, um, you know, if, if it's a volleyball player and they have a rotator cuff injury and they're trying to spike the ball, they need to know that they can't do that uh, in certain instances with as much force as they much they would. So they can place it. They can place the ball. They don't have to kill it. Uh, but they can place that ball where they need to, use finesse. Uh, and that's kind of what we tell in fencing. So sports medicine practitioners, doctors, PTs, athletic trainers, chiropractors, uh, which is what we have on our staff, uh, usually will... You know, try to educate the coach and the athlete to change their game a little bit so that they can protect their body. 
clearly your knowledge extends outside of fencing to a very uh, broad array of sports, but specifically to fencing, a little modest in, in your experience fencing. Of course, as you mentioned, a national team member, but also coming up through through the system of Coach Naz Limov, who's now uh, at Ohio State. How, how present is, is that in the minds of the athletes you're working with? And, and if they are aware of your, your own fencing history, how much confidence do you think that gives them in your recommendations and the fact that you truly understand their, you know, their pain, their injury, and what they need to do? Uh, great question. So I was just at the Pan American Games and we had an FA fencer on my table. Uh, he's the first time he's made a team uh, since I've been around. And he didn't know I had 55 plus World Cups under my belt. Uh, which is fine, uh, but I think that it does build a little bit of trust with the, with the athletes sometimes when they realize, oh, he was on the team, he has done some fencing before, not only on the internet, uh, on the domestic circuit, but also internationally. And I think it helps out a lot for, for those athletes. Um, you know, when I tell these athletes, like with this hamstring injury, and in, uh, World Junior Worlds, I tore my hamstring, and that's actually why I got into sports medicine. Um, going through my rehab, and uh, that's actually why I'm here today, is uh, because of that injury. Uh, so I think it does translate over really quickly. I don't talk about it a lot, uh, but I think it does help when they know that somebody's been there and done that. Well, you're definitely helping out with uh, today's athletes, Team USA, and you'll be in Rio. So yeah. uh, go Team USA. Yes. Thank you.